Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, and I feel very honored to be in the presence of such fighters who have been fighting to end mass incarceration and solitary confinement. Um, just a little bit about me before I go into the things that I commit to doing. Um, I am the daughter of immigrants from Paraguay. I was born in South Philly. Uh, my parents are domestic workers. Um, they were running from an oppressive dictatorship uh, from Paraguay at the time. Um, and, you know, I think have always been fighters. And there's a lot of things to say about my past, but for this moment, I think some of the most important things is, well, I've been fighting for 15, 20 years on the issues that matter the most, I think, to me. Um, I have spent time at side of CFCF to uh, work and organize with young people who have been locked up as, um, young, who are young people who were locked up as adults, uh, doing arts trainings. I did that for a very long time. Um, and, I, and that was when the beginnings of the Youth Art Self-Empowerment Project had started. I also have done work to end mass detention of migrants. I have been inside of the Burks Family Detention Center fighting for a lot of the women and children who have been locked up uh, for crossing a border and had been there for months with their two-year-old son uh, or their one-year-old. And so the kind of uh, situation that I see us in is that we are locking people away rather than addressing the issues of our society. We are depending on cages to solve the issues of poverty or to solve the issues of racism. Um, and for me, I think that in a hundred years or even sooner, we're going to look back at this time in the U.S. and be ashamed of the fact that we are locking people up the way that we do. Um, and I also want to just say that I had two uncles that had been locked up, one in Latin America as a political prisoner who had spent two years after he had tried to take over, the, take over the dictatorship and try to assert the dictatorship. And I also had an uncle who died in Greaterford. Um, my uncle had mental health issues was an alcoholic and uh, had committed a crime actually against my father. So we were both, I mean, this is common. This happens in our families. And I think that we were never able to address those issues beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then it exploded. But rather than actually help us, I think the criminal justice system made things worse. Mm -hmm. He also was held in solitary confinement. We knew when he was in solitary confinement because we would stop getting phone calls. And all of a sudden, he would drop off, and we'd be like, what's going on with him? And I also know that his mental health was never addressed. Things got worse for him. I think that like when he got sick, um, he wound up dying of cancer um, when he was in Greaterford, and I had to go visit him. Um, and it was one of the most devastating things to see somebody uh, die in prison. I think that it is complete torture, in my opinion. Um, and so for, from my experience, and the world, the world that I've come from is to fight. I am so honored to be in the place with such fighters. I'm like, this is going to happen because y'all are so ready to just give it to them. And I'm ready to give it to them. So I'm running for city council, and I have a deep commitment to ending mass incarceration. And the idea of holding people in solitary confinement, especially the most vulnerable, is beyond me. So if we need to pass a resolution, you count me in, count me in to make sure that young people are not tried as adults, that we get all those young people out of CSCF, put them back inside the juvenile system, and we fight for our people to be free. <coughs> that is my commitment to you. Um, and I, it's weird, I've never run for office. It's weird for me to say vote for me, but I'm going to say it. On May 21st, <laughs> when election day comes, Vote for me, vote for the movement, and let's vote to end Yes. It seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I won't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so I'm ready. For I'm ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this. I think that I think we, that all, have we all have a purpose in life. In life. And mine is going to take on a task that most of that most of back away back from. Away from. That impossible. That impossible. So people say it's impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see I don't see anything as being impossible.
mentality, mentality, mentality there are there are different mentalities but just like just there's like different there's different ways to teach people how to there's different ways to, there's different to, ways to communicate with people it's different ways different ways to communicate with people and there's different mentalities so i do so i do see hope i see hope and that's all coming